Hey everybody, I just ate a bunch of chicken nuggets. And you know what that means. It's time for another talking time lapse video with me, your good buddy, Josh Davenport. As always, these videos are brought to you by the fine folks over at Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Davenport. Uh, so I want to thank everybody uh, pitching in over there. That's Brandon, Dan, Vivian, Mike, and Matt. Uh, thank you all very much for your continued support. And today we're doing a time lapse video of RG Bros Comics, uh, Old Year's Evil, which is uh, among the pantheon of comics created uh, at the end of last year about how totally shitty 2016 is. Uh, so you got a little happy baby 2017 here through this portal in uh, this weird otherworldly zone I was drawing here. Uh, you know, I was trying to do something in the vein, like those old weird white rooms you see in uh, movies and stuff sometimes. Uh, getting the perspective of making it appear that way was uh, a little bit difficult for me. And I went ahead and did what I always do right here at the beginning, which is draw like door frame and, uh, you know, the little runners that go across the bottom of the wall. I'll remember what they're actually called at some point. Uh, but drew those in and I didn't really want to put them in that because I wanted it to just be as nondescript as possible, just a door in a white void, you know, but having a crease like there was the edge of a room there or whatever. So we got Reggie finding the portal to the salvation that is 2017. We'll get to see whether uh, that is true, whether 2017 will be any better. Hopefully not as many people uh, that were cool will die this year. Hopefully not as many people will die, period. But, you know, uh, if... People who make the art that I enjoy could stay around. That'd be even better. So, here's Old Man 2016 with his weirdo, pseudo-Dr. Wily hair and big bushy beard. I didn't draw him in with the the sickle that sometimes he gets because I wanted to have this, this gas can here for the gag of uh, burning it all down, himself included. I had a little bit grander plan for the third... Uh, frame of this where he was just going to be sloshing gasoline everywhere all over himself and the room and it just uh it wasn't coming together so ended up just going with him pouring it on top of his own head which you know i think still works but uh that's that's the way it goes at these rock and roll shows sometimes so uh speaking of people who passed away last year we lost uh carrie fisher there was a report out today about uh you know, whether they were going to, what they were going to do about episode nine, basically, because she filmed everything for episode eight. Uh, and so, you know, that's covered, but they were saying that she had a very, very large role in episode nine of Star Wars and that they weren't sure what they were going to do about it. And people were like, oh, you know, it's, it's kind of a crappy three way choice. You know, some people were like, they should CG or like they did in Rogue One or whatever. So, uh, crap. That might be a spoiler, but there is, uh, if there is anybody who hasn't heard that yet, I apologize. Uh, I probably won't go back and re-record this, but there's about f a half a second of a CG Princess Leia at the end of Rogue One uh, because it, you know, lead, leads off uh, or ends off exactly, almost exactly where uh, you know the original Star Wars takes up. And I was like, a lot of people were saying how good they thought that looked. I, it just was, it was all right. It wasn't, you know, uh, Star Wars prequel CG bad, but I just, like, her and Grand Moff Tarkin. Grand Moff Tarkin, I think, was pulled off a little better. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so some people were like, well, this is just CG her. And, I, you know, I don't think that's the right move. And, I, you know, they've already come out and said they're not going to CG her into Episode Nine. Other people were like, maybe they should recast. You know, who knows if that would ever work. And then some people were like, just write her out of the movie, which... All of those are terrible choices. And, uh, you know, in a perfect world, no one would have to make that kind of choice for the movie. But it's just always going to bug me. You know, one, it, it bugs me that, it, uh, you know, we lost somebody so cool and, and who, who's done so much uh, awesome stuff. But, it, you know, on top of that, uh, to a lesser extent, this is going to be another... Uh, situation like we had with um, you know the final Christopher Nolan Batman movie that was apparently completely different before Heath Ledger passed away 
And then, uh, not that I didn't enjoy, uh, was it The Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, that was the last one. I enjoyed the heck out of that movie. But, you know, there's always going to be this what if in the back of my mind. It's like, what if, uh, you know, Heath Ledger was still around and they were able to make the movie they wanted to make? How would that movie have turned out? And so now we're all going to have that going on with Episode Nine of Star Wars, you know, never knowing what the the you know what the movie would be like or what the plot would be because chances are that's going to change uh significantly uh, now that carrie fisher's not around and uh it's just a you know it was a sad situation already and it just it gets you know it's it's not getting any better is, is what i'm saying on that one but uh Let's not get bogged down in the trash fire that was uh, 2016, even though we're watching a comic being made about it. We're well into the inking phase here. I say well into, we're into uh, the second frame, which, uh, you know, not a lot of crazy uh, inking going on in this comic just in general, but we're, we're, we're getting through it. I don't know if uh, any of you uh, follow the video games like I do, Probably a lot of you, hopefully. Uh, but I watched the big Nintendo Switch event the other night. And I'm looking forward to the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I've always been a Nintendo person. Like, that's where I, the original NES is where I cut my teeth. Like, I think I had played an Atari 2600 a little bit before that, but it didn't really stick with me. Uh, but I remember specifically my cousin getting a Nintendo and bringing it over to my grandparents' house and being blown away by it. And then we later got one and it was just like, just changed my life forever. Back then when I was, uh, what, four years old when that thing came out. But uh, I've always liked this stuff. You know, I enjoyed the Wii U, even though there wasn't as much to do on it as uh, maybe some of the other systems, but I played the heck out of it. Me and my daughter played it constantly. You know, all the first party Nintendo games on there were all amazing. Uh, you know, it's barring the fact that we never got a Metroid for it. Uh, not that Other M was, you know, great. It was terrible. Definitely the worst of the Metroid games. But it just seems like they've abandoned that wholesale and they're not going to talk about it or release it or anything to that matter. So it was, uh, it was disappointing, but no surprise that we got to the entire Switch event the other night and not a word about any Metroid stuff was mentioned at all. Not that I was expecting it, but it doesn't... Uh, doesn't make it sting any less, Nintendo, if any of you are listening. Just so you know, you hurt my feelings. And uh, I thought we were friends. I thought we were old, old-time old compadre comrades. And uh, you let me down. This time. Now we're into the, the inking. So, you know, I don't know if you guys uh, have any thoughts about the Switch or, you know, you're thinking about getting one or looking forward to playing uh, Breath of the Wild, which I am, uh, on there. You know, let me know. Let me know what you're thinking about that. Uh, might talk about that one a little bit more in the, the next video as well, but we'll see. We'll see the way things go down in the next couple of days. Uh, do want to talk about some weird stuff. Went to the the uh, the mall with my daughter today uh, because I had made a deal with her. If she you know kept up some stuff around the house that we would go to the arcade today, and so we did. And uh, it's always fun going out to uh, the mall and playing old-style arcade games and stuff like that. But when we went there, the area specifically around the arcade today just smelled like a giant fart. I mean, it was just disgusting. Uh, you know, not the worst smell I've ever smelled in my life, but not not pleasant. Uh, so that put a little bit of a damper on it. But at the same time, like, we used to have uh, Dippin' Dots at the mall and... I was talking the other day, and I realized that my daughter had never had Dippin' Dots because she saw them on a YouTube video, and she, I was like, oh, man, you've never had Dippin' Dots. I didn't even realize that. I was like, well, next time we go to the mall, we'll get some because I know there's uh, Dippin' Dots there. And so like, we went to the mall, and we played some video games, and then it's like, okay, let's go get some of those Dippin' Dots. And so we start walking around, and of course, where the kiosk had been before, now there's like a yogurt stand, so the Dippin' Dots are gone. And then I'm like, well, okay, maybe I can salvage this and look up Dippin' Dots close by. And there was one close by, and they had been, I think Google's terms for it were like permanently closed or something like that. Not a temporary closure, but a permanent closing. And so I'm beginning to wonder, I haven't done any extensive research on this, uh, whether Dippin' Dots as a business venture is still a thing. 
at this point. I, I hope it is because, you know, it's kind of neat. Not that it's my preference for ice cream at any given point. But it would be weird if they just disappeared. I think they still carry, like, some prepackaged uh, dots at the gas station or something like that near my house. But that might be the last resort uh, for getting a hold on some. So if you know what the mystery behind Dippin' Dots is, feel free to fill me in because I'd really love to know what's up with this astronaut ice cream that we can't be getting anymore. We have no more of that astronaut ice cream around here, thank you. Uh, is that what they, they seem to be saying? Uh, so here we are into the coloring of the comic, which is a little bit of a thing. I couldn't... It, it took me a while to, to, to consider whether... I was going to end up doing this uh, light. I wanted, you know, light pouring through the door or whatever, but I didn't know if I wanted to make the background very dark. So it's like that one thing you want to have the like the weird clean room white thing going on uh, with the weird 2016 void. But then if you want to show how nice and sunny 2017 is, you might want to have light flooding. And so I eventually went with that, uh, which ended up making the second frame a lot darker because I had to put the tent over the whole thing. And shadows everywhere because, you know, the door slams and there shouldn't be any other source of light except for maybe the exit sign. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm wondering, uh, yeah, look at, look at different door designs. Let's see what I'm making those. Right now I just kind of have a default door. And it's either just flat or I do like these little four panel Things on, you know, sometimes they have like the wood sculpted out in that shape. There's like four rectangles or some business. Here, our front door looks a little bit like that. And then figuring out what layer I actually put stuff on, it would be nice. There we go. Filled that back in. A little hand shadow, a little beard shading, a couple of liver spots. You gotta make sure you put those liver spots in. This guy, he's been through some stuff. He's got the, the old gravy stains in the armpits. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just like to get a good good biscuit slathered in gravy and stick it up in my armpits and he's clearly not washed his clothes since the last time he did that uh, so he's got the uh, he got them pit gravy stains going on we're here in the final frame doing some more bug-eyed action I didn't realize I made his ears that pointy now in, in retrospect but you know I'm fine with it I wanted to look a little feral here Trying to figure out all the uh, different lighting for this was interesting. I'm pretty happy with the way it ended up coming out. Hopefully all the subtleties showed up. Every once in a while I do something that uh, in the higher resolution shows up well. And then when it ends up in the, uh, the comic, it uh, doesn't show up as prominently because I... Uh, draw these at like I think 5,000 by 1,000 and then uh, for the comic I put it like 1,000 by 400 uh, on Patreon if you give above 3 bucks you get to see it at 2,000 by 800 uh, but for the most part it is 1,000 by 400 when it gets printed out or uh, posted to the web and you know typically that's, that's fine but every once in a while I've had like a couple comics and it hasn't happened to me uh, very much recently because I, you know, you live and you learn, but there were like maybe a small detail that gets lost. And I think maybe once it was part of the uh, punchline that kind of disappeared a little. I had one where at the end uh, it was supposed to be uh, Reggie, Barry's Baxter, and Gilbert up to their heads in like an ant pile. And the ants, I'm not sure if they came across at the lower resolution. So let that be a lesson to you, everybody. If you're doing really fine, detailed, or tiny, tiny objects, uh, consider your resolution. You know, you can you should consider the resolution at any given point, uh, but definitely consider it at those points. And uh, let's see, not too much dialogue going on in this one, but there's a big, a mighty chunk there in that last uh, panel. Figuring out the right placement for that was not was not uh, very easy for me. And get this uh her I just can't I can't imagine that uh, this 2016 guy actually knows how to make uh, words with his mouth it's a lot of grunts so uh, thank you everybody for hanging out for this video and uh, don't forget to 
like and subscribe and leave a comment you know uh, if you have a question or just want to say something about the video and i'll catch you on the next one